All righty then. We are back for another installment of this podcast. It is episode number 11. What's up? It's been a rough ass week, just like the week before this one. <laughs> we can't do this anymore. <laughs> just complain at the beginning of every yes, episode. Yes, <laughs> every episode. People are like, what a bust. <laughs> Everything's fine. I'm totally not sick right now. My kid totally doesn't have RSV. Like, we're good. Yeah. Things are not burning down around us. We're good. Yeah. Everything's great. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. I think so. We decided we're going to do a QA episode this week. Yeah. Why are we doing a QA episode? Just because I want. I know what I think I want to share and what I want to talk about, but then there's the other side of the coin where I'd like to be getting feedback from you guys and um, just kind of like keeping a pulse on what people's struggles are. And there's no easier way to get what you're looking for than to just ask. Oh, so wow. I asked a couple times. And so I have a bunch. Here's the thing, guys. I don't know how they do it, but somehow people are getting their robots <laughs> to comment. In it's, it's the little input thing on your Instagram story. Where you ask a question, yes. someone can input the answer. You fill in the box, but like, how is your robot doing that? Yeah. That's I don't have hashtags or anything. Like, how are you even finding me? These people don't follow me. One of the questions was, how old were you when you learned Santa was re wasn't real? I, listen, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I didn't even check that one. And that's probably not fake. <laughs> what the hell? So I guess I'm going to answer that right now. Um, I have no idea. I uh, can't remember. I don't remember the age, but I remember... Uh, how it happened i mean who, why are we even talking about this because now i feel bad because this person could be and i will find out if this person is one of my followers all i do know in regards to all of that is there was one time in the car i asked my mom mom is santa real while my little sister was in the car oh no obviously traumatic because i got in big trouble for that because oh, no. of course she was like of course you would ask me when your sister's in the car um my point is there are robots that are like answering and like cool stuff. Low carb llama. Awesome page. Great content. Low carb llama. So if you see me get a little hung up, like my brain normally does, it's because I am filtering through that. Filtering and through. I was not responsible enough to just go ahead and write these questions down. So I have screenshots of the answers and we're just going to kind of take it from there. Something that I did post about in my Facebook group. If you're not in my Facebook group, it is more ketone centric, but it's great. Um, your Facebook group my Facebook group it also has the same name as this podcast so find me on Facebook um, I have a page too but it's linked to my Instagram it's called sustaining keto and I keep seeing floating around people saying that like this is the time of the year or the month where people give up on their New Year's resolutions oh yeah that's true so I didn't get much feedback on this post and I don't know I want to know if you do, if you are in that group or you do decide to join it, comment on that post because I'm interested in two things. Number one, have you given up on your resolutions? It's the 23rd of January when we're recording this. If you have, why do you think that is? And if you haven't, why do you think that is? Like, I'm just super interested. Mm. Nothing has gone wrong if you haven't stuck to what you said you were going to do clearly that's kind of like the consensus of like that just happens that's why i think resolution is kind of like a buzzword and people like are like don't call them resolutions but i'm just interested if it has been different for you this year if you have made it longer like why is that and if you haven't and this keeps happening and this is a pattern for you i'm really interested in why you think that is i think i know why it is but i want to know and it helps me to help you guys better so let's get started. <clears throat> also, disclaimer, every one of Maggie's answers to these questions is going gonna, is gonna to circle around to your thoughts, <laughs> just so you know. You're well, not going to get the answer you want. Some of them are concrete. Really? This is what I was thinking about today as I was driving, as I continue to put off the Q&A that was promised to you, <laughs> is that, so what I'm learning about with my coaching is that like, I will probably, I will have a very specific group of people that I work with. However, I can work with anybody. Um, but what I was thinking was like, there are some people that are like the best at teaching keto newbies. And that is so awesome. Yeah. Like there are so, there are some people out there. This was just a, a big light bulb that went on. There are people that will tell you exactly what to eat. They will tell you really good tips for getting started, which I have some of those. Um, but they are, they love talking about that stuff and they love sharing about it. And you should go find them. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. You... You, especially if you're like me and you have like an online platform where you're sharing stuff, what I have found is if I'm sharing stuff that like I don't want to talk about or if I find is draining, I don't like it. 
and yeah. you, I don't show up the way f- that I want to show up for you. So for me, it became very important that I was like, I love sharing food that is simple and like that you can, like I just shared my tuna tacos where you like make tuna and then you put them inside a piece of Swiss cheese. I'm not going to write a, a, a cookbook. Okay. Yeah. Do not fo- follow me for awesome recipes. <laughs> but if you want food ideas that are simple that you can probably make from stuff that's already in your kitchen, like I'm your girl. If you want someone to walk you through how to get started on keto, I'm not that person. Yeah. But the person that I am is the person who will help you with this this super, super important piece, which is the mindset side. I can give you keto tips and and tell you you know, from my side, what I think would help, but there are people who like specialize, even if they're not like professional, they don't charge for their services. They, their accounts specialize in helping you. And I just was thinking in my car, I'm like, it's okay that you don't feel like your shining quality is helping people from the get go. Like, let's say you've never done anything keto and you're like, I want to get started on keto. What do I do? Not my favorite question to answer. I don't like I don't like answering that question. I can, I can answer that question. I can direct you to a place. There's a, a, a few keto subreddits. Get on reddit.com and mm-hmm. figure out how to use it and go onto the subreddit and search. the. It's, a, it's an online forum. Search in the keto subreddits, whatever you're looking for. There are hundreds and hundreds of recipes, posts, people that have been there before. I hate Reddit. I love Reddit. I know. Reddit is amazing. And that's... That's what I want to highlight. There is different strokes for different folks. (laughs) Like he thinks Reddit. I, when I first started, I followed so many people on Instagram, but just know that you are going to get different content from different people. And my hope is that the people that you're following love what they're sharing. Like they love well lit, creative recipes. If that's what you're into, or if you need something super simple. Okay. Most of my demographic, I know it spans far and wide. Most of my, well, well okay. I, I, I don't mean so that. Fam- so famous. But no, but I, <laughs> I don't mean like there are men that follow me, not most of my demographic. Got there it. are um, single college students that follow me, not most of my demographic. Most of the people that follow me are ages 25 to 40 or 25 to 45. They're moms. Yep. A lot of them with young children. They're balancing working from home or working out of the home. It's just there are specific struggles to that demographic, which I am part of, like that is where I'm at. And so the people that follow me and are like getting hyped because I wrapped tuna in a piece of Swiss cheese, like those are my people. Like those are the people that I'm, (laughs) that I'm best at helping. I feel like there's so many resources out there too. You can get so much different stuff from everyone. So I just decided to stop feeling guilty that I'm not the best person, but you know what I do think I could do is get a list of five accounts that are really, really good at providing resources to people who have never made a keto meal in their life. And I'm going to start pointing people to those people. So if you can think of any people where you're like, Oh my gosh, so great for just getting started. DM me, DM me who you think, specifically I should start pointing people to because I do feel like I have stuff to offer but not as best as other people do for people just getting started so just be happy with what you can offer and get really good at offering that thing don't try to just be this jack of all trades of like you're not going to get meal plans from me it's just not going to (laughs) happen Swiss cheese tuna mayo eggs bacon there's a meal there's a meal plan. although I'm trying to convince her to just delete her recipes off her website and she thinks the world will destruct it will. If I delete, the, I eight, deleted, the eight recipes. I deleted a couple highlights and it's been mayhem. I had to put them back up. All right. Q&A. Q&A. What is the difference between being in ketosis and being fat adapted? No idea. Ketosis means that your body is producing ketones and that it is using fat for fuel. I'm not a scientist, guys. There are scientists, though, that I can point you to. So th- I'm going to explain to you my understanding. <laughs> ketosis means that you've starved your body of the glycogen in your muscles. So you can be in ketosis and you will be in ketosis at first without being fat adapted. What fat adapted means to my understanding is that your body has made the switch from using glucose as its primary fuel source, carbs and sugar, to ketones, fat for fuel. Um, Ketosis you're going to feel in um, like five to seven days, so three, I'd say three days to seven days, you'll get into ketosis, which is like you've burned through your glycogen. Your body has already used that. Um, glucose is the preferred source of fuel. Again, this is all to my understanding of three years of keto, but ketones are a more effective, uh, cleaner 
more steady fuel. So I believe I've heard that it takes 30 to 60 days to get fat adapted, maybe longer. Everybody's, everybody's different. The, um, the best way to know is like, you know, when you watch um, Avengers and you see Hulk like busting out of his clothes, mm -hmm. when you start feeling like that, that's when you're fat adapted. But the thing is for me, I feel that at two weeks and I don't know if someone would tell you, no, you can't get fat adapted in two weeks. And it may be another thing you'll notice about being fat adapted is that you'll be keto for a long time. You'll go off and you'll have some Chinese food if you're me. And then the next day you'll test your ketones and it'll say 1.2. Yeah. Your body knows that it's using ketones. And so even if you throw it some glucose, it just burns through that glucose and goes right back to it's sometimes a, where you, it's thing. a beautiful thing. And that's what I wish we should always have a list of all of our, our episodes, but the podcast that talks about like being in ketosis for a long time before you go off, that's one of the benefits. Why? Because if you can get your body trained on using fat for fuel instead of glucose, being fat adapted, you're going to get those benefits where like going off plan is not going to affect you the same way it will as if you've been keto for five days. Like, like one meal is not going to affect you. Yeah. You're never, you want to get to that point where you're feeling that steady energy where you're feeling so good. That's a very good sign. You're, um, Appetite will decrease. I don't feel like that happens immediately. I feel like that's something yep. that comes across with fat yep. adaptation. You'll just, you'll forget to eat. That's and how not cravings. hungry you'll be. Yeah. And uh, cravings and appetite suppression. I mean, it just. That's the one reason I do keto. Yeah. Because I can't handle the sugar cravings. Yeah. It feel it feels like, like just so much. You feel like a little more like at your, at the mercy of yeah. your surroundings and yeah. like just, it just is easier to give in your body. It's like retraining your body to just not really care about that stuff very much. And it's a huge blessing in disguise yep. to put in that work. And then the payoff as like, Oh, I just, I used to love cookies and now I just don't really care for them. And no, I have I don't to kind of hype myself up to even want one because the yeah. physiological of desiring that cookie it just disappears. So that's why we've talked about urges before, but like keto makes that whole process so much easier and yeah. being fat adapted makes it so much easier. Fat adapted, get it. Fat adapted is the ultimate goal. The goal is not ketosis. The, the goal is not, obviously it is ketosis because fat adaptation is long-term ketosis. I, I, be I believe I've heard that you can also get fat adapted in other ways where you're still... But I'm not. I'm just not as well versed on that. Um, but fat adaptation is the goal if you want the full benefits. Um, are your kids? Are you doing keto for your kids too? I think I got asked that question a couple of times. Wait, what? Do you, what does that mean? Is Holden eating keto? Oh no, no. Um, feeding children is like a, a lot of work. A problem in itself. So he does know we eat keto and it's really <laughs> funny because he'll be like, dad, is this keto? Or he'll be like, dad can't eat this because it's not keto, but not in a damaging, harmful. I know there's so much like feelings that people have about like teaching your kids healthy habits, but he does understand that keto is just that we don't eat a lot of sugar. He knows that a lot of sugar is not healthy. He does not eat anywhere close to perfect, but it's hard enough to get him to eat anything. It's as just it is. a convenience thing. Yeah. You know, it's well, and what he kids will are a eat, lot of work. you give him four different options and he maybe wants one of them. Yeah. So no, he doesn't, but I'm hoping we can instill in him the reason why we eat the way that we eat that isn't weight related. And I don't think that's going to be hard to convey to him with the experience that I've had. Yeah. He does have 50% of my genes. So if he has any mental illness stuff, um, or wants to play sports or be an energetic kid. I mean, I would love for my kids to be able to really be able to feel the difference in their own bodies. Oh, like I don't want that because it doesn't feel good when I eat it. It makes me sleepy and I don't want to sleep. I want to play football or whatever he wants to do yeah. as long as it's not soccer. Just kidding. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be so bad at watching kids sports for real. Um, <laughs> oh, let's see here. Don't send me hate mail. Soccer lovers. Um, Keto breath or keto related odors. Ryan, do you have any experience with this stuff? Uh, it's, no. I, yeah, I, I probably I, I probably do, and I just I'm like I don't really care. Well, the fact is that keto is a diuretic, so it's going to pull the water out of your cells. So that alone, I would, the only thing I would really recommend for that is hydration and electrolytes. You have to realize that the, the same way you lose five pounds the first week you do keto is because you're just, it's sucking all the water out of your cells, which is you need to hydrate so that there isn't body odor and stuff like that. But, oh. and okay. yeah, 
Um, how did you modify your keto lifestyle during your pregnancy? I would um, check out my podcast. Again, I wish I had the number for you, but um, like number three or four, number three or four about mm. my keto pregnancy, mental health journey, all of that. I so just real quick. The you... short answer is that I didn't very much. I couldn't stay keto f- till about like consistently till about 23 weeks. And then as far as like, what did I adjust? I didn't really Okay, I eat way too much deli meat and tuna, whatever, and runny eggs. But I just, as far as carbs, nothing changed. I, I ate the same way. But also, I was able to eat way more carbs. Breastfeeding and pregnant, something happens in your body where I don't know if it's just using up the energy so much faster, but I could kind of do whatever I wanted. And by noon the next day, I would be in ketosis. It was insane. Um, but that'll give you more information. Did you drink ketones while you were pregnant? I did, but I drank them when I was very nauseous. And so if you know what it's like to ever get nauseous from eating or drinking something, it kind of, it put a damper on that for the rest of my pregnancy and I didn't go near them until, um, until I had the baby. How do you own the fact that you do keto for health and not just to lose weight? Own, how do you own it? I'm not completely sure what you mean by that question, but it kind of sounds like you might feel like you have the need to defend why you're doing keto. Uh. And and I could I could be totally wrong on that. Um, but that's something that I would just encourage you to question. Why do you feel like you need to explain yourself and defend yourself to people? If you do it for like, I can proudly say that I do it to lose weight. And for my mental health, I have no shame in saying that I do it. So, and, and this isn't something that I've come up against very much as far as familial pushback. Like you, You've had a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's not get into that. <laughs> it's not a family therapy session. Um, <laughs> I don't feel like I've had it to the point where it's made me feel like, like I need to defend myself. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. How do you own the fact that you do keto for health and not just to lose weight? That's it's easier, I think, for people in general to own that they do it for health than it would be to say you're doing it as a diet. I don't know if you want people to take you more seriously, but what that's coming from is your thoughts about what here we go. We're already back at thoughts told you of what you're making it mean. Like if one of your family's like, oh, why are you eating that way? Or um, that's not healthy, your cholesterol or whatever they have to say, you're making it mean that they don't support your choice. So you have to now show up and defend your choice. Yeah, I think it's it's just defense because like traditional science and medicine is not caught up to. It turns all of that on its head. Yeah, with the salt and, and the I fat think, and the. I think everyone's like, if you don't know anything about the keto diet, and you tell someone how much fat you eat, they're like, "The hell are you doing?" Yeah, well, especially the older generations. Yeah, they, I mean, they lived through the fat-free phase and yep. stuff, and the butter, like all that stuff, is like what? cholesterol that you eat like that now. So. I know that it can be hard for some people, but what they're telling you is a reflection of what they think. It's not really a reflection of what you're doing, even though it can feel that way sometimes. And that's because we make it about it. Like, and everyone feel like, let go of that need to defend yourself because it's going to be exhausting because we all know that someone who believes something different than you, just the way, same way you will, they're not looking for information to contradict what they believe. Yes. So if they believe keto is bad, you're going to waste your energy. Like you're going to waste your energy trying to convince them of something else because they're only going to be looking for the evidence that supports that keto is bad. And Mm -hmm. no matter how much you provide for them, it's not going to change anything. So save your energy, funnel your energy into something. Just be an example of what's possible. And also know that there may be some hating going on if they're not happy in their life and if they're not happy with their body and if they're not happy with how they feel. So again, I know you've heard this and I hope I can help under or explain it in a way people understand it more, but like what people say and do has nothing to do with you. And that takes a long time to learn and to really break apart and understand, but it doesn't, it has everything to do with them. So save your energy. This and, is across the board in life too. That can, that can be applied to so many subjects. Yeah, everything, everything. And, we don't believe that though. Most of the time we don't believe it. We do believe what they're responding to is us or who we are or is a reflection of us and what we're doing. And then it's like, you feel like you get nothing by defending your way of life. You won't. Yeah. You just be a happy person and you just say, oh damn, they must. There's nothing better than to be an example of what's possible. Yeah. Just show them. 
Like you don't have to tell them. And I used to feel that need a lot in my life was to defend my choices and to defend who I was. And then I just stopped doing that. And it's so (laughs) freeing to just be happy and be content with who you are without feeling the need to constantly defend yourself. Yeah. Um, Let's see here. What is your favorite family vacation? We don't go on a lot of vacations, but we're going on one in a couple of weeks. We are going to Oceanside. California. Which is pretty much probably our favorite vacation. Yeah. Growing up, Ryan Ryan's family got a uh, timeshare down in Oceanside, and they did that for years and years and years. And so we like that place. We like hanging out there. So we're going to go down there and work down there and take our four-year-old to the beach, which he only went to when he was 18 months old. 18 months? Yeah. Pretty sure. And he had hand, foot, and mouth at that time. So yeah. we have really healthy children. Good times. And so, yeah, it's going to be super fun. Um, we don't travel very much. I, traveling has given me anxiety, but I'm trying to learn to be different than who I was before. So we're probably going to do like a good, we're actually going to Vegas at the end of this week and then a week later to Oceanside. So I'm trying to put myself out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Not sure what I'm afraid of. I just like the comfort of my home. Um, what would you say to people that, that tell you my doctor says that keto is bad for you? Most doctors probably will tell you that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's okay. <laughs> It's not a bit, do you, do you see everyone wants like, well, what do I say back? Well, what do I do? How, what if it was okay that your friend's doctor said keto is bad for you? What if that means nothing? Again, it's not a situation that you need to defend yourself or you can always get more information. It does that like pique your interest. Do you want to know why the doctor said, do you know, want to know why they believe what they believe? Or is it just someone who's trying to discourage you and saying, well, I checked with my doctor and they said that keto, that I shouldn't do keto. And it's probably like, then you, maybe you shouldn't, but. Also that's great advice. But also someone once told me that when you go to medical school for eight years, there's like two days of nutrition. I've heard it's even less than that. So do they really know? Yeah. But also, and this is a hard thing that I feel like, I don't, um, a doctor, <laughs> a doctor, obviously they've gone to school and they have training and stuff, but I know I've been in the situation where I've known, I've known for myself that whatever the doctor has recommended has not been best for me as me being in charge of this body and me being in charge of my health. My doctor is not in charge of my health. I am. Um, so I would just take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. You get to believe whatever you want to believe and whoever you want to believe. Um, I would hate for there to be people who didn't try it just because someone who may be educated and maybe uneducated, maybe he is educated, maybe he has tons of experience and he's like, based on everything I've learned, that's just his body of study, what he's been taught and what he's seen and what he has learned. He has deemed that it's not healthy. That's his opinion. And that could be his recommendation and it's your job of whether or not, but this doesn't even sound like it's a, it's a recommendation to you. It's just someone who says, my doctor says keto is bad for you. Like, okay, good for your doctor. Doctors are not like gods. Yeah. They, they are wrong sometimes. Yeah. And in our experience, we've, we, you know, with holding in his hips. D- yeah. We've had a couple different experiences that have shown me that you, you do need to trust your gut sometimes and you do need to get other opinions sometimes and yeah. you do need to find what works for you. And you are, it's very important that you stop giving your power to other people. And that includes doctors. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm not saying that doctors don't know what they're talking about. I'm not saying to ignore what your doctor says. I'm saying take responsibility for your health, whatever yeah. that means for you. I can't tell you what that means for you, but don't put your choices in someone else's hands. You're welcome to get feedback from the internet, from your doctor, from your mom, from your sister. But at the end of the day, none of that matters because you're in charge of you. Do you count or limit your calories while on keto? I don't. We don't. We talked a little bit about in episode eight, I think, our routine and what we do daily. We're still doing that. And um, if you're stalled out, I would would start tracking. mm -hmm. Just, I mean, I... I could never just say I'm tracking for the rest of time because I hate yeah, tracking. Yeah, that's not sustainable it's so for us. It's so tedious. But if you want to just check in and see where you're at, it's a, it's a great thing to do for maybe a week or two just to, to kind of gut check how much food you're eating. You can't eat everything you want, be in ketosis and lose weight. Yeah. 
and we've said that before and we'll probably have to say it again. You you cannot <clears throat> eat endless amounts of keto food and meat and cheese and cream cheese and everything that you want. Be in ketosis and be like, why am I not losing weight? If you're not losing weight or you are overweight, there is extra weight. It's because of overeating, overconsumption of calories. Those, those have to be reduced. I can do that naturally by having a very small eating window. However, I will guaranteed overeat if I start eating at 8 a.m. Plus I feel terrible. Yeah. Um, but if you start eating at eight and then you eat at 11 and then you eat at noon and then you eat at three and then you eat at seven and then you eat at nine. Like, I'm sorry, that's more calories than I want. I would much rather restrict my time eating than count my calories. Yep. There are different ways you can do it. A million different ways. You can count your macros, whatever is sustainable for you. And I want to encourage you with all the feedback you're getting, all the people you follow online, all of the books that you read to tailor make a perfect keto setup for you that you can sustain for the long time. And there are some people that like, it gives their soul peace to count macros. They love it. Yeah. It lights them up. That's not who I am. That does not mean that's not who you are. So if you want to check in every once in a while, I would do that. I would just download my fitness file and just plug everything in and be like, oh, 2,200 calories. I, I need to reduce that. It's I, always a little shocking when you start tracking how much mm -hmm. you actually are eating yeah. if you do track everything you put in your mouth. Yeah. For sure the biggest the biggest holdup. Um, just getting started with keto is taking ketones necessary. Is it necessary to test your ketones? So the first question is taking ketones necessary. Um, no. Of course not. Nothing is necessary. Um, and I've been trying to pinpoint how I describe ketones to people. And I spoke about this a little bit on my stories the other day, but I think I figured it out. Keto is great and it has lots of amazing benefits like appetite suppression, craving control. It boosts your mood. It just makes you all around feel better and it can help you lose weight. Those are all amazing benefits that you'll start seeing when you switch to a keto diet. Ketones have the ability to put your body into ketosis where if you were to test your blood ketones or your pea ketones, it would show that there are ketones in your body. So you can experience, I do have customers who experience the benefits of ketosis without following a keto diet. It just, they just do. I have found that I love the combination of keto and ketones. And what I have found that they do, if I have to explain them in their, in their simplest description is that they take all of the benefits that you love from keto and they 10 X them. So if you like the focus on keto, it's like 10 X focus. If you like the appetite suppression, it's like 10 X appetite suppression. Cause when I was explaining the ketones to somebody else, I was like, how is this different than what keto does? But yeah. I've done just keto. That's just amplified. It just amplifies them to where you're like, I feel so good. I feel so focused. I feel so in control of my hunger. I feel so it's you're, you're going to hear that and go, I get that with keto. And I don't, not believe you. But for me, keto got me to about 75%, which when I was running at 15%, 75% was great. But, but for me, it's a no brainer to take something that like, it's like, I mean, it's insane. The, so that's why I take them. So no, it's not necessary, but neither is MCT oil in your coffee. But what that can help you do is produce endogenous ketones inside your body and it fuels your brain and it suppresses your appetite. It's a great tool. So is collagen for your hair, skin, and nails, your joints. So are ketones. They fall directly into the category of tools that complement a keto diet. For me, ketones, if I if it was like go without anything, you get to pick one thing, I would pick ketones. Yep, same. At even as important as electrolytes are, I would pick ketones first. And then I would pick electrolytes, and then I would pick MCT, and then I would pick collagen. Luckily in my life, I just pick all of those things. I have <laughs> MCT and collagen in my coffee, electrolytes once a day, twice a day if I'm extended fasting, and then ketones twice a day. It works great for me. I've never felt better. And so they're not necessary, but they are so helpful. And I highly, highly recommend them. DM me if you have any questions on them. It is a controversial topic, which you could learn more about in episode one of the podcast mm -hmm. um, that just talks about you can totally do keto any way you want, including without ketones, 100%. If you want to up-level your keto experience and feel even better and do even more, and you want the answer to how I do 87 different things a day, it, it is ketones. That is the answer. But I feel it's best coupled with keto. Boom. Do you want to wrap it there or do you want to do a few more? We can do a few more. Okay. I'll try to, I'm going to try to just answer questions and then, and try to not go off on tangents. Someone asked for constipation on keto. 
never been an issue for me really, but a fiber supplement may help. Magnesium, you may need more magnesium. Or some psyllium husk. Or Ryan swears by psyllium husk for either problem, whether it's like loose or constipation. Um, the next question, how do I get myself motivated to get going and exercise? I don't really believe in motivation as I get older and older. I feel like there will be days where you feel motivated, which I would describe as like, I feel pumped. I feel, I, I want to do it. Is that what motivation is? I woke up today wanting to work out. Like you yeah. feel motivated. What you're saying is just for some reason, I just want to do it today. There's n there's nothing pushing me back. I feel motivated. That's probably how I would describe it. Um, your thoughts are what is making you not motivated. Um, you need to make, you need to override the inevitability that your body is going to be like, I'm tired. Let's not get up. Let's actually watch a show instead. You have to have the ability to look at that and overwrite it and say, okay, my brain wants to keep me safe and cozy. I'm going to put my shoes on and get on my bike yep. before I have the opportunity to change my mind. Um, my biggest problem is laziness, tiredness, and the mental game, not quitting any and all advice. Ketones. <laughs> Ketones <laughs> will help with all of that. But again, that's a thought thing. Um, I would inquire as to why do you think you're lazy? Why do you think you feel tired? We're always exhausted by our thoughts and everything we think we have to do. And when you exhaust yourself mentally, you, it's really hard to get your brain to tell your body to go do a workout or to so go meal prep. It feels impossible. Yeah. You're, you are incapacitating yourself with your thoughts and literally listen to any of my other podcasts if didn't you want I, help with that kind I of stuff. Didn't I promise every answer is going to come back to your thoughts? It is it, because that's everything. It's everything. Um, I say, um, a lot. I love being back on keto, but I forgot how awful the flatulence can be. Gas problems Fart, on keto. Farting. I don't have that problem when I'm keto. So I don't know. It could be the type of vegetables you're eating. Maybe do you? Not in particularly just, you need to maybe just test out different foods. Maybe. Your stomach is probably just reacting to something. I would, I would see if there's something you're pretty consistently eating. I do not have that problem at all with keto like almost to an astounding where I'm like, it's shocking that it this actually isn't a gets way better for me on keto. Yeah. Ryan's stomach is destroyed when he's not on keto, like I, within oh, how, an hour. Oh, done. <laughs> okay. Suggestions for staying on the keto wagon, getting very bored with keto. I think you could probably answer that question for yourself. Whoa. And Harsh. I mean that in the in the sense of if you're bored, what does it take for you to not be bored? What are you thinking that's causing you to feel boredom? I'm so sick of the food that I'm eating. I your your thoughts are causing you to feel <laughs> bored. I would encourage you to find the thought that's Goodness bringing on that gracious. feeling, and I would decide not to be bored. I would decide to think something different. They're that, probably eating the same thing every day. Yeah, maybe you are, and maybe for you, creativity like find some accounts and find some recipes that. Um, you know, help to encourage you to get out of your normal routine. Maybe that's exactly what you need right now. What do you do when you have a day when you want to eat everything in the house? I either do or do not eat anything <laughs> in the house. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, no shit. Do you guys need this podcast? Should we just, okay. Thank you. That was episode that was 11 wrap. Um, that you either do or you don't. And that's going to come down to what I'm thinking. If I feel like I'm overwhelmed and I can't take this anymore and I'm just pushed to my limits and it's just getting to be too much, there's a far greater chance if I'm telling myself that story that I will give in and eat everything in the house and say, screw it, which we talked about a little bit on the last podcast. But there's Great. always yeah. the option to not. I have to tell you guys, I have had a hellish couple weeks slash months and I have gone off keto maybe one time I have shown up. I have kept my commitment. I have done what I need to do. I've showed up for my family. I have known that I, it is not necessary to take a shitty situation and a shitty circumstance or one that you're interpreting, like let's go with my kids are sick. And then also be like, how about when my kids need me more than ever? And I'm at the beck and call of these tiny children, I'm going to eat crappy. So I feel terrible. This is a hard situation I'm dealing with. I'm going to pour shittiness on top of this hard situation. It took me years to figure that out, that I was not helping anybody, especially my kids who I needed to be there for by making sure I was in the worst place to tend to them. So I do myself the favor. I show up for myself for them. Such a good podcast by the Life Coach School today. If you guys want to listen to it, it's about being selfish. 
And it's so good. I have so many moms that will tell me when it comes to the ketones or keto that they just, they don't invest in themselves and they don't take care of themselves because they're so busy taking care of their kids. It's so important for those people specifically to know that you have to take care of yourself first. You have to fill up your cup. You have to put on your mask on the airplane, whatever analogy you want to use. You have to take care of yourself if you want to help other people. So it's all going to be about the story you tell yourself. And if you think that a good excuse to go off keto is because you have a lot going on in your life, take a step back for a second and just be like, is this going to help the situation? Or am I just trying to numb the discomfort of these circumstances that are out of my control? There wasn't one day these last couple of weeks where I woke up and was like, damn, I wish I had gone ham with all the carbs and sugar. Not one day, every single day. I appreciated the fact that I stayed true to what makes me feel the best so that I can get to all these doctor's appointments so that I can deal with early wake ups late, all the stuff that this whole situation of sick children entails. I got to show up my best way. So you have a choice. You can either eat everything in the house or you can not. Or I have a, I have a really good practical tip. Okay. Chug some water. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you just cannot overcome the hunger, you're drink, try drinking way more water than you normally do. That could help. You know, I hate concrete advice like that. <laughs> that's but that's what I'm good. here that's for. That's why we have the alternative of like Ryan is basically the the person with the objections in the audience. That's like, well, no, literally, what can I do if I want to eat yeah. everything in the house? It's a great option. Drink some water. You might be thirsty. Yeah, that's, that's what I do when I'm when we're doing the the sixty hour fast. Yeah, I'm just I'm always drinking fluids, and it yeah. does help with the hunger. Well, there's your practical tip, and then there's my not so tangible tip. I missed one. Hair loss on keto. I do not have much information on that. I've never had that experience. Check out Dr. Berg, Dr. Berry. They have information that's like scientifically doctor based of that kind of stuff. All I would tell you is have you tried upping your protein? But again, I'm not a doctor and that isn't something that I've had an issue with and then solved. How do you get through your period on keto? I struggle so much with this. This was weird for me after I had my baby. I started feeling like weird and like more emotional. Like my hormones are just different since I had my second baby and I've been more hungry. It's not any different than any other time of the month. You may feel a little different because you the urges may be stronger. Go to episode six, I think. Western bacon cheeseburger, I think. Yeah, that one's about the urges. You're going to have urges that are just going to be stronger and you can just consider those as hormone driven urges. You are going to have thoughts and have a feeling in your body that encourages you to feel an urge to eat and you get to decide whatever you want to do with that. If you want to be more lax during your period, that's your, that's your choice. If you want to just push through it, that's your choice too. I've done both. It just depends. I think we can probably wrap there. We will do these every so often just so these questions that you feel like you're not getting answered or you just want my and Ryan's specific opinions on these will kind of like give you some insight into how we handle these situations or what we recommend. If you have a question for a future Q and a podcast, just DM DM one of us. How about email instead? How about I set up a web page for this where you, they can just enter their question to be, to be answered on the podcast. That's a really good idea. We're, we're in the process of overhauling my website and Oh yeah. Um, that's, I think that's a good way to just, you can ask, ask us and the questions will be answered on the podcast. And I think that's a good idea. But until then, if you want to, my DMs are such a crazy place. Um, I will see it if you email me at lowcarblama at gmail.com. If you're like, I just am not getting an answer that I, that resonates, or I just want your specific, it's the questions that you have. A lot of people probably have, and I'm starting to like, I can only spend so much time in my DMs answering individual questions. So if you have a question, it would probably help if I ex- expressed the answer on this yeah. on this podcast so it can get out to more people and um, help more people rather than just the one-to-one. Word. All right. That's it. We'll see you next week. See you next week. <laughs>